All right. So we're going to get right into it. So I am going to read the scripture, and the scripture is coming from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. So finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when that evil day comes, you will be able to stand your ground. After you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breast, breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we're going to talk about the armor of God if you guys haven't figured that out yet. And I know that you guys are probably like, oh my gosh, the armor of God. Like everybody knows about the armor of God. We've heard it taught in so many different ways. But do we fully understand it? Do we really grasp the armor of God? We talk about it all the time, but do we really, really grasp it? You know, it's easy when somebody's going through something to say, oh, well, did you pray about it? Oh, well, just have faith, just believe. But when you're going through the battle, do you tell yourself that? So I want you to ask yourselves tonight, are you guys going to battle naked? Eisenhower said, your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. When I read that, I was like, wow. So, so true. So tell the person next to you, don't tap out. This is the message. This is the title of my message tonight. And I'm tapping out. Pastor Steve, come on. I'm just kidding, y'all. I am just kidding. I'm just kidding. But haven't we felt like tapping out sometimes, guys? Like, let's, just, let's be real. We felt like tapping out. All right. So have you been in a season where you wanted to tap out? I'm sure most of you guys can relate in here. I'm sure, unless you're like little, but you know, even with that, I'm sure that small kids in here have felt like they wanted to tap out, whether it's in a sport or whatever. Everyone has felt defeated one time or another in their life. Okay, so first I'm gonna talk about boxing and how we can relate it to the armor of God. When God was beginning to speak to me in my prayer time, he started talking to me about boxing. And you guys know I do not know nothing about boxing. <laughs> I mean, I'm a fierce fighter. Don't get me wrong. Ask my husband. I will fight you. But there ain't no rules to it. It just comes how it comes. So, of course, I had to study. I had to look up what boxing was. And so, can I talk to you guys tonight and just, you know, share with you what I, what I learned. And so, we're just going to talk about the boxing. Okay. So, a boxer's goal is to knock out his opponent, stunning him so severely that he cannot regain his feet before the referee counts to ten. This is called a knockout. The result in a victor, uh, this results in a victory for the boxer still standing. So when the boxer knocks his opponent down, he must retreat to a neutral corner. If the knockdown boxer can stand quickly enough, he has a 10 count, right? If he can stand quickly enough, then the referee will go over and ask him if he's okay and then the fight goes on. There are two main elements of boxing and they are attack and defense. Defense begins with, with, the stance, sh so, with the stance, feet shoulder width apart, right foot slightly behind the left foot, the right hand is held be beside the chin, the elbow down along the body, the left hand is held out a few inches from the front of the face, and the elbow is bent. This gives the boxer an opportunity to block or dodge most of the punches thrown at him. It's also common to see fighters holding their gloves much lower than traditional stance. And this can be done to, for, st for strategic reasons, to throw them off, um, or also um, if they're trying to make quick body punches to throw the opponent off. Or it could be because they're getting tired or they're lazy. They're getting lazy. So, I mean, have you guys been tired? Have you been lazy? Have we been you know, letting the enemy punch us in our faces because we're, we're getting tired or we're just lazy and we're not putting on the armor of God? So a modern 
boxer's arsenal generally consists of four main punches. The first one is a jab, a straight, low power punch with the left hand, leading the left hand, often used to test the opponent or find the range of the opponent. Enough jabs with this jab can eventually wear them down. Then you have number two, which is a hook, a powerful punch in which the, the fist arcs out to the side before swinging back in and connecting to the side of the body or the head. This can, this can be thrown with either hand. Then you have an uppercut, almost always thrown with the right hand. The arm drops with the elbow pulled back and the fist is thrown out and up in the arc that connects with the op opponent's face. Useful for getting under an opponent's defense or when the boxers are close together. Then you have the last one, which is called the cross. The right fist is thrown from the standard stance where the chin is held near, crossing from the left to right in a straight line towards the opponent's face. The boxer shifts his weight and his shoulder forward to add power to the punch. So can any of you guys relate or can you say that you have been jabbed, hooked, uppercut, or crossed by the enemy? Like, let's really think about this. Like, you know, when the Lord was really like, you know, I was just in my prayer time and just started like giving me visions of like a boxer and I'm like, I don't do, I don't end up on no boxing. You know, and then he just started like unfolding and they're just showing me like visionary pictures and I'm like, well, I mean, yeah. But if we're not if we're not aware of the opponent's tactics, then we're gonna get our butts kicked. Yes. And if we're not dressed, if we're not armored up, if we're not suited up, we're going to get it. Yes. So we have all felt this way. We've all we've all in some sort of way have been jabbed and punched by the enemy. Some sort of way. So what do boxers wear? They wear boxing gloves, they wear a mouthpiece, and some of them wear a head guard. Boxing gloves are made from padded leather designed to protect the hands as well as reduce the damage done to the opponent. Under the gloves, their hands are carefully wrapped in athletic bandages. This wrapping is closely regulated. So I, start, I was like, okay, well, why do their hands wrap? Like, why do they wrap their hands and then put boxing gloves on? Because you know me, I don't know. So, of course, I have to find that out. So, you know, they, they wrap them first because they have to protect their hands because their hands are their most important weapon in boxing. Like, that's what they use. Because you cannot kick, which we'll get to that. <laughs> okay, so amateur boxers, they also wear headgear um, that primarily, prim primarily protects against cuts and scrapes. So... Here is the following things that boxers cannot do. They, strike, they cannot strike below the belt. They cannot strike when the opponent is down. They cannot kick. They cannot strike with elbows, forearms, or the inside of their hands, so you can't, can't be smacking nobody in, back, in boxing. You cannot headbutt, and you cannot bite ears, and you would think, you would think that this would not have to be spelled out, but Mike Tyson kind of proved that wrong. So, you cannot grab onto the ropes and you cannot poke the eye out with poke their eyes with their thumbs. I'm like, really? People think of that? Why would you? I don't know. You cannot wrestle or grapple, grapple. I don't even know, or hold somebody excessively. So, I want you guys to ask yourself these questions. Has the enemy? kicked you while you were down? I mean, seriously, has the enemy kicked you while you were down? Has he struck you b below your belt? I mean, we, these are some things that I started thinking about. I'm like, well, yeah. Of course he does. He don't follow the rules. He's a, he's a, he's a rule breaker. I was thinking of something else. A law breaker. I think I used to say something to somebody like that all the time. You're a lawbreaker. The enemy is a lawbreaker. Okay? So, we have to fight back, guys. We can't just stand there and just take the punches and take the blows from the enemy. We have to fight back. God has given us the authority to do that. So, now that we've looked at the boxing aspect of it, we're going to look at the armor of God, what God has given us to suit up with. 
So I want to look at it from the Roman soldier's time. And you guys know that this is from the Lord because I do not like history at all. I don't. I really don't. Steve will be talking to me and say something. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Because I just, I don't, I don't like history. I'm not going to sit up here and lie on the pulpit. I'm just not doing it. I'm not afraid. Exactly. You tell the truth. That is one of the, that is one of them in here, y'all. <laughs> so listen, so I'm going to, so I, I started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, we've heard about the armor of God. We know the, the helmet and all that. And so I'm like, okay, God, what are you trying to tell us? Like, what are you trying to tell me? And so he starts talking about like, you know, back in the Roman soldiers days. And I'm like, I don't like history. So of course I have to do my homework. So as you guys know, that Paul wrote the book of Ephesians when he was imprisoned. So first we're going to talk about the, the belt of truth. Tell the truth. Okay, so Roman soldiers always put on the belt first to hold on all the other pieces of armor in place. The soldier was always ready for battle and always took the belt off when he was off duty. Soldiers in Paul's day wore a leather girdle belt that was tightened around the waist to protect their loins. I heard a story where a general ordered the soldiers to go cut the belts off of the other, the other battle, the other team, soldiers. See, I don't know history, y'all. So, anyways, he told, they ordered him to go cut the, the belts off of them. So, when, while they were sleeping. So, when they awoke to the battle cry, they ran to the front lines to pick up their weapons to put them on. And they could, it couldn't hold the armor because their belts were cut. So, they ran around trying to hold up their pants while in battle. How many of you guys are running around with, trying to hold your pants up? While you're in battle, how many of you guys are running around like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? When you're in a battle, when you're in a crisis, when you're in a situation and you don't know what to do, how many of you are running around asking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Or calling your best friend and saying, what should I do? When we should go to who? To God. So I thought that was good. That was good. I heard that story and I was like, wow. So don't let your pants sag. Pick your pants up, y'all. Keep your belt on and keep it moving. All right. So, if they didn't have their belt on, then they couldn't wear the rest of the armor. So, in order to fight the devil, we need to know the truth. And we need to wrap it around us like the soldiers did, like with the belt of truth. We have to wrap it around us. What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. And that's why the Bible says, the truth will set you free. So ask yourself these questions tonight. Do you have the truth? Do I have the truth? Am I speaking the truth? Am I listening to the truth or am I listening to a lie? See, we walk around, if we walk around telling lies or believing lies, we leave the door open for the enemy to come in and attack us. So tell your neighbor, don't tap out. All right, next we have the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate was a piece of metal that covered the front of the torso of the soldier's vital organs. Notice that this only covered the front, it didn't cover the back. This is because the soldiers would not turn their backs towards the enemy to run away. Are you guys turning your backs from the enemy and running away? The breastplate of righteousness protects us from Satan's attacks. Without righteousness, we leave ourselves open to his attacks. To be righteous is to obey God's commandments. Are you obeying his commandments? Are you doing what he says? Are you just doing what you feel like doing because it's your life? The breastplate guards your heart. Is there sin in your heart? Do you have sin in your heart? Do you have unforgiveness in your heart? We all have sin. We're all sinners. We're not... We're not perfect and we never will be perfect but we have to continuously try to live how God has commanded us to do so does your plate of righteousness look like it's been through war or is it cleaned up and shining like the sun like these lights in my eyes <laughs> well it shouldn't look like that it should look dinged up and dirty because if that's what it looks like 
then you're fighting the enemy back. It means that you're resisting. It means that you're fighting him. Remember, sin is ugly, guys. It's not pretty. Sin is ugly. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. It's ugly. So, yeah, we were ugly when we were born. But look at us now. <laughs> amen. Amen. So we have to resist it, guys. Seriously, we really have to resist the enemy. So are you crouching down and turning your back, or are you standing firm? Tell your neighbor, don't tap out. Next, we have the shoes of the gospel. The shoes worn by Roman soldiers were different from sandals worn by other soldiers. These shoes were constructed of layers of leather that were pulled up and laced around your ankles. And oftentimes, they put small spikes in them to help with traction during battle. Just like, you know, cleats, you know, for football, soccer. Why do they wear cleats? Because if they don't have the traction, then they cannot be successful in the game. So, God gave them these shoes, which he's given us as well. Having our feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace gives us good footing to go where God's leading us. He didn't give us shoes from the Goodwill, y'all. <laughs> Even though I shop there a lot. And I ain't gonna lie, these are probably from the Goodwill. But, he gave us expensive shoes. Some Nike Air Jordans. I, I hear they're real expensive, I don't know. <laughs> But listen, y'all, listen. The price that Jesus paid on the cross was expensive too. So we're entitled to the shoes of the, of the gospel of peace. So even though I try to be cheap sometimes, like I'm entitled. I'm entitled to the, the shoes of peace. I'm entitled to get some Nike Airs. But I just can't bring myself to do it. So are you guys preparing a peaceful way to present the gospel to the lost and dying world? Ask yourselves that. When's the, when you went to the grocery store the last time and you see someone that you know that they are not saved, did you say something to them? Did you, even if it's something so soft as, how are you doing, ma'am? How are you doing today? Or I like your shirt. You never know what you're going to say to somebody that's going to touch their life. It's going to sow a seed. The ones who reject the very message that you're trying to share. So when you're trying to share, you know, sometimes I think, when I think about this, I think about sometimes family because, you know, just as Jesus said, he couldn't, he couldn't minister in his own town. And so sometimes when we try to minister to family, it's hard because they won't receive from us. But what are you going to do? Are you going to keep peace? Are you going to get offended? Are you going to get in your feelings? No, we're going to keep peace because we're not going to tap out. So tell your neighbor, don't tap out. Okay. No uppercuts. Next, we have the shield of faith. The warrior's shield was a warrior's first line of defense. The shield was made of two pieces of wood glued together that covered the canvas in leather. The shield weighed about 22 pounds and was big enough to cover the whole body when they would crouch down. But it was also big enough to cover the man next to them. So when they're standing on the battleground and you have a, you know, someone here and someone's next to you, the shield was big enough to cover them, but it was also big enough to cover the person next to them. I didn't know that. So during that time, in the Roman soldiers, during that time, the darts were actually dipped in oil and then they were lit on fire and then they were shot, to the, shot at the enemy. The shield was used to protect the fiery darts. It protected soldiers from getting burnt. We have to have the faith that God will do what he says he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Walking by faith and not by sight is the key. Yes. How many times are we getting burnt? Or leaving the door open for the enemy to attack us because we're not believing what God says? Because we're not believing what he says about us? How many times are we cracking the door open because of unbelief? Because we're not putting our faith in God. 
You know, we say, you know, people say it all the time, you know, oh, I trust God. I believe in God. But when you're going through a crisis and when you're going through a situation where it's hard to trust for yourself, like, God, I can believe it for somebody else. But when you're going through it, are you telling yourself that? Are you saying, God's got me? Or are you cracking that door open? So when doubt and fear creeps in, are you standing on his promises? Or are you cracking the door open with the unbelief that comes in? So what does scripture say? Take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And I thought it was so, so good because, you know, the scripture says that. And I never knew that they, in the soldier, in the soldier, Roman soldier's time, that they dipped the arrows in oil and then lit them on fire and then shot them at the enemy. So I'm like, well, God must really know what he's talking about. <laughs> so we're going to not tap out. All right. Helmet of salvation. So when a Roman soldier suited up for battle, the helmet was the last thing they put on. Without a helmet, the soldier would be vulnerable, so much so that the rest of the armor wouldn't be of any use. It was used to protect, to protect, against, the blows, to protect against blows to their head and their face. Just, just like we train our, train our child to wear a helmet on a bike. Like if they're you know, trying to learn how to ride a bike, are you just, you're going to tell them to wear a helmet. Why? Why do we tell our kids that? Because we don't want them to fall off the bike and get some head trauma and ruin their life for the rest of their lives. Your brain is very, very important. And with trauma to the brain, it can throw off the whole rest of your body. So without salvation, a person is vulnerable to the enemy's tactics. We must first receive salvation and then continue to walk in it. And sometimes it's not easy. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. Salvation is a free gift, but everything else that's coming, get ready. Get your boxing gloves on because it's coming. But God's given us the authority. He's given us, he's given us arsenal tools to combat it so we can do it. So, when the negative thoughts come, we must first recognize them and cast them down immediately. If we don't, that's where we get in trouble. And I know we've heard this taught many, many times. Sometimes, you know, we're, we're all guilty of it. The Bible says that we should renew our minds daily, right? God didn't give you a helmet from the consignment shop. Even though I shop there a lot, too. He gave you guys the mind of Christ. So ask yourselves, am I taking the thoughts captive and casting them down when they come? When the thought, I'm not good enough. When the thought comes, I'm not wanted. I don't belong here. Are you recognizing these thoughts that the enemy puts in your head? Because that's what they are. They're lies and you're believing them. Are you recognizing them and immediately casting them down and replacing it with who God says you are and what God says about you? Because that's what matters. Don't tap out. Tell your neighbor, don't tap out. So we have this, the sword of the spirit. So the first five pieces of the armor were defensive weapons, and the sword of the spirit is the offense weapon. The swords that the Roman soldiers used were sharpened on both sides and on the point so that it can pierce through the armor. So when I read this, I immediately heard the words and kind of seen them on all sides. And then I've seen a, a vision of a sword that was like uh, rotating and it was like shiny on all, the, all sides. That's what the word of God does. It protects us on all sides. So when we're tempted or we're going through something, we must first go to what? We must go to the word of God. Jesus always spoke the word as an offense weapon. Jesus was our example, so we are required to do the same thing. He came to the earth to show us the way. And so if Jesus is doing it, he's showing us the example. So this is what we must do, the same thing. We must combat the situation with the word of God. So Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, 
sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates through the dividing soul and the spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. How, I mean, like I said, God must really know what he's talking about. <laughs> the sword in the, Roman in the Roman times was sharpened on all sides and, and even on the point so it could pierce through the armor. And what's Hebrews 4.12 4, say? It's active, it's alive, it's sharper than any double-edged sword, and it penetrates even through the spirit, the joints, the marrow, through our heart. It judges our heart and our attitudes. Tell your neighbor, don't tap out. So knowing what we just heard about the armor, are you guys suiting up appropriately? Are you suiting up? Like really think about that because Again, I know we've heard multiple um, messages on the armor of God and it taught this way and that way, but seriously, really think of, about it tonight. Like, are you armoring up? Are you suiting up appropriately? Stop reacting to the enemy's voice and start responding to God's voice. Some of you guys in here are prolonging your destiny because you won't armor up and fight back. When you feel like you can't stand anymore, it's because you're under attack. Or you've been under attack and you're tired of standing. You know, after fighting for long periods of time, it gets hard to stay the course. Sometimes we get hard. Sometimes we want to tap out. You know, just like the boxers in the in the game, like they're you know they're getting their faces beat, blood. And, I mean, like I'm like I'm done, y'all. I'm done. <laughs> but seriously, in the spirit, like that's really it's a war in the spirit, and that's you know a physical aspect of like a picture of what's really going on. It's a battle. And I have to say, like, I mean, I've, I mean, the last seven months have been hell. It's been a fight. But you know what? I'm not tapping out. Because if I tap out, then I lose. Then I lose. It gets hard. It's not easy. And I know that some people in here are going through cer certain situations and, you know, have crises going on as well. And you want to tap out. You get tired. Some of you say that you're, you know, God, you're going to have to do something because I, I just can't do it anymore. But God's already done it. He has already done what he's going to do. We have to stand up and do what we have to do. Because he's already given us the authority. And God will back us up when we exercise that authority. So when we do armor up, when we're putting our armor on and we're doing what we're supposed to do, what God has commanded us to do, he's going to back us up. He will back us up. And I'm not saying that, you know, if you guys are feeling like you're, like, tired and you want to tap out, I'm not saying that, you know, it's, that's it, just go ahead and tap out. I'm not saying that because we have all felt that way. I feel like that right now, y'all. I feel like tapping out right now. But again, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tap out. I'm not going to give the enemy ground or get in my head, even though sometimes he does, but I immediately have to say no, no, no. So we have to put on the armor of God and, and utilize the tools that he gave us. Some of you get discouraged and don't want to fight anymore. You want to lay your weapons down. But understand this. Just because you lay your weapons down doesn't mean that the war is ending or that it stops. It doesn't stop. It don't stop. Just like I said before, there's a spiritual realm and that occupies the same time and same space that we cannot see. So we're fighting an enemy, as the Bible says, that is, you know, it's not flesh and blood. Even though sometimes we take it that way. There's many times I wanted to beat my husband up. Many, many times. But you know what? I had to recognize, I had to recognize what it is. And it's not him, it's the enemy. So we have to fight in the spiritual realm. So if you feel like you want to put your weapons down or if you are putting your weapons down, stop. Pick them back up. Pick your weapons back up. Because God's not done. You have the victory. Amen. Just like the song they said. I didn't tell them to sing that song. But you have the victory. Amen. Sometimes we get lazy. How many times do we get lazy in here? I mean, I've, I've been lazy. 
We start to put, not put on the whole armor of God. We'll put on like, oh, I'm going to put the helmet on today. I'm not going to put the breastplate on today. I'm just going to put this piece on and not this piece. We get lazy. We miss a church service and then the next week we're like, oh, it's fine. I'll just watch it online. We get lazy. And so before you know it, guess what? You're in a, a pit that you're having to now pull yourself out. You have to climb yourself out of the pit because... You let the enemy in. You open the door and you let the enemy in. So we can't get lazy. Forming a pit that you have to climb out of. And I don't know about y'all, but it's hard climbing out of a pit. It's very hard. I mean, I'm sure Mark can testify. He's probably been down in some pits in the army. And it ain't hard. It ain't, I mean, it ain't easy to get out of pits. Especially when you're four, 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 four foot seven. I'm five one, thank you. I'm five one. <sighs> Jesus bless the little people. <laughs> and the tall ones. Uh, we're not going there, ma'am. <laughs> okay. All right. So when we get lazy, guess who sees that? The enemy does, and he takes advantage of you. So have you ever felt like you've been taken advantage of? Yes. We all have. Well, the enemy takes advantage of us every single day. He tries to, let's say that. But when we get lazy, when we take our armor off, and we're not prayed up, we're not reading the word, he's going to take advantage of you. He's coming for you. He comes in, and he says, oh, she doesn't have her helmet on today. We just want to put some thoughts in her head, tell her lies, and then if she doesn't immediately cast them down, then she starts believing the lies. And then she continues to walk in the lies, and then she becomes the lies. So then it becomes your identity, and then you sit one day, how the heck did I get here? Because you opened the door to the enemy. Because you didn't cast down the thoughts immediately. Because you didn't say, no, no, that's not who I am. And you know what? Sometimes, sometimes things come from family members or the ones that are closest to us. And they say things that hurt you. But again, you have to recognize who it is. You cannot take a personal. You have to recognize who it is. There has been so many times in my family, you know, that they have said so many things to me that I have, I have grown up in that identity of this is who you are this is what you are and it's not the truth so I had to come out of agreement with the lies that I believed you know I don't know most of you guys I'm not sure how many people know but you know I grew up in an abusive situation and you know growing up being abused then I, I moved out and I was I was young I wasn't 18 yet I moved out and I got into another abusive relationship why because that's all I ever knew. And so I accepted that for what it was. This is, all I'm, this is all I'm worth. This is what I'm used to. That's a lie. That's a lie. And then this guy with big muscles came along. He would come through the, he would come through the McDonald's drive through y'all. And I was like, boy. <laughs> Your arms don't fit in your shirts. <laughs> that is a true story. I, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, we have to combat the enemy with what God's given us. We cannot get lazy. We have to keep moving. He sees, you know, when we're weary... The enemy sees that. He, he loves to kick us when we're down. You know, the boxer, they can't kick, but the enemy sure does. When you get down in the ditch, he's steadily kicking you with something else. You're like, oh my gosh, when you think that nothing else can get worse, here comes some more. You're like, okay? We felt like that before. I know I'm not the only one in here. But that's why we can't stay down. Can't stay down. Because if we stay down, we lose. And we're not losers. We're winners in here. We are winners. So in boxing, we learn that they have a 10 count. So when they get knocked out, it's, it's ugly. Sometimes Steve be watching, Pastor Steve be watching some boxing stuff, and I'm like, 
And he even, y'all, he, sorry, honey. He even, he even be doing like this. Like when they be doing it, like he be doing it. I'm like, it's so funny. It's so funny. But in all reality, when I'm knocked out and there's blood and their mouthpiece is coming, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, why would you endure that? So it's ugly. They have 10, they have a count, a 10 count to get back up. Most of the time they get up because if they don't, then they lose. And we cannot stay down. We cannot stay down and die or lose or allow ourselves to stay down in a pit. We have to get back up. If we armor up, then you will win. And God never said it was going to be easy. What war do you guys know or have seen that was easy or pretty? Right now there's a war going on. Is there anything pretty about it? Is there, is there anything pretty about it? No, it's ugly. It's not easy. It's messy. War is messy. And we're in a war. Whether you guys believe it or not, whether or not you feel like you're going in a, in a war, like personally, there's a war going on right now that you can't even see in the spiritual realm. There's a war going on right now because the Facebook live stuff, it ain't even on because the enemy is mad. <laughs> So there's a war that we cannot see. We must put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand. Therefore, the Bible, the word says in Ephesians 6, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when that day comes, when that evil day comes, that you'll be able to stand your ground. It doesn't say put on some of the armor. It says put on the full armor. So some of us are walking around here with partial armor, armor, and we're wondering why, you know, you got your helmet on, but you wonder why you're getting kicked in the lake. Because you're not armored up. So let me ask you guys, what are you doing in the midst of your fight? Have you tapped out? Have you laid down your weapons? Are you staying down? Sometimes it's hard when you get down in a pit. It's hard to get out. But guess what? You guys are powerful. You have the authority of God. God's given each of us the tools to combat the enemy. But the question remains, are you using them? Are you using what God has given you? Giving us. I mean, he's given us the authority. He's given us, it's right here in his word. Are we doing what he says? It doesn't do us any good to put one piece on or two pieces on. We have to put all of it on to be successful in battle. If you go to battle, if you go to war and you don't have everything that you're supposed to wear, my gosh, you could get killed. And what is the enemy trying to do? Kill, steal, and destroy. If we partially armor up, we will not have the victory. And it leaves room for the enemy to come in. See, I know what it's like to be in a war, physically, physically warring with myself. I know how it is to emotionally be warring with myself, and even spiritually. Have I wanted to tap out? <laughs> Absolutely. More times than I can count. Have I, myself, put on the full armor of God during battle? No. There's countless times that I can say that I've walked into a battle naked. That I've walked in, not prayed up, not read my word that day. You know, walking into a situation where I didn't put the helmet on. I didn't, you know, wear my armor. There's been many times that I haven't done that. I'm, I was partially suited up. And what God was showing me was that he's given us the tools to fight back. He's given us the, uh, the authority to rule over the enemy. He showed me that sometimes when we're fighting, we get wearied and t weary and tired, and we want to give up. But the reason why that is is because we're not fully armored. God was showing me that we're not putting on the armor of God. We might think we are, we might say stuff, but 
are we really doing it? Are we, do we fully grasp it? Like I said earlier, do you fully grasp the armor of God? So when divorce comes, are you wearing the shoes of peace? When abuse comes at you, have you picked up your sword? When sickness is taken over your body, are you wearing the shield of faith? Or do you pick up the, the doubt that comes in, that tries to creep in? Because the enemy is always coming with something else. Do you think it was easy when Pastor Steve was going through his whole ordeal with his sickness? Do you think that was easy for me? I know a lot of people say, man, you're strong, you're strong, you're strong. It's not easy. It's not easy. Do you think that I immediately picked up my shield of faith and was like, God, I know you're going to do this. No, I was bawling like a ball baby. Like, but then I have to, you know, have my brothers and sisters in Christ comfort me and get me back on track because that's what we need. Because I know what the Word of God says. I know what God can do. I've seen it before. I've seen him work before in Pastor Steve's life. So do we fall to the enemy's traps? Absolutely we do. But we have to quickly remember, what does God say? When the thoughts come of perversion or addiction tries to creep back in, are you putting on your helmet to cast the thoughts down? Or do you pick them up and you open the door and then you wonder how you got there again. Because the Bible says that when a house is swept and you fall back into it, it's coming seven times worse. So then you wonder, what the heck? Why? How did I get here? Because you opened the crack. You opened the door. And it, all, it only takes this much. Takes this much. When the lies come against you, are you putting on the belt of truth? When people lie about you, when people slander your name, when whatever, when you believe the lies that the enemy is speaking to you, are you putting on the belt of truth? Do you cast it down and say, no, no, I'm not going to believe that, or no, I don't care if they're slandering my name, because Jesus Christ is the only one who says who I am. Are you guarding your heart with the breastplate of righteousness? See, we can't just put on one piece of armor. We have to put it all on. So I want to close out. And as the pastoral care team comes, please, if you can play something soft for me, Pete, please. If anybody needs prayer, I want you to please come. See, God loves us. And he wants us to be successful in battle. God wants us to be successful. He loves us so much that he died for us. And he wants us to be successful. He's given us the tools. Maybe you're in a battle right now. And you're saying, Lord, help me. I feel like I'm drowning here. If that's you, come. Maybe you, you just came out of a battle and you need some strength. You need strength to continue because it's hard. It's hard to keep fighting. It's hard when you go through something and you have to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. You get tired, you get weary. But God's here. So if that's you, I'm asking you to come if you need strength for the battle that you've just walked through. Or maybe you don't fully understand the armor of God and you want to know more about the armor of God and you want to know how to suit up in the armor of God. Don't be ashamed. Come, because this is, these are the tools that God's given us. We have to wear these tools to be successful in what He's called us to do because it's going to come. It's not a matter of if it comes, it's when it's coming. So if you don't understand what the armor of God is used for, and how to even suit up appropriately. Come, guys, come. Or if you just need prayer for anything, 
I'm asking you guys to come because God wants, God cares about you so much that he knows everything about you. He knows how many hairs on your head. He knows how many hairs on your arms. He knows everything about you. So if you need prayer, I'm asking if you guys will come up. So as the people start to come, I'm gonna just pray us out. Again, the altar's open. Please come if you guys need prayer. I hope you've received from the word tonight. So Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord God. Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit that's coming tonight, Lord God, and has dwelt with us. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit would just begin to do a work in us, Lord God, that you just put this seed in our hearts, oh God, that you would just prepare us for war, Lord God. Father, that you've already given us the, the keys and you've given us the weapons, oh God, to fight. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord God. Remind us, Holy Spirit, remind us to, to armor up when the battle comes. Help us, Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for each person in this, in this place tonight, Lord God, and anyone who will watch this later. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would tug on their heart, Lord God. Help them, Lord God, to understand what the full armor of God is and how we should appropriately wear it. Father, I pray that anyone who is partially wearing the armor of God, Lord God, that you would just, you would just open their eyes, Lord God, and begin to minister to them, Lord. Father, I just thank you for the night. I thank you, Father, that you are the great I am. Father, I thank you that the battle is already won. I thank you, God, that you help us, Lord, to put one foot in front of the other, Lord God. Father, we never fail to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We love you, God. Amen.